The eastern phoebe often heads up the vanguard of migrating songbirds in the spring, and is one of the last songbirds to leave its breeding grounds in the fall. This drab little aerial insectivore, meaning it feeds on insects in flight, is truly more than meets the eye. It holds a great place in the history of North American ornithology and citizen science, given that the eastern phoebe was the first species given a unique identifying leg band, by Audubon himself no less, and it innately knows its song at birth. Whatever the case, this medium-sized flycatcher does seem drab, with its brownish-gray tail, wings and head, and its sepia-brown back, white chin, brown-white breast, and yellowish-white belly. Eastern Phoebes can look pretty motley before they finish molting their feathers in the early fall. This species has a relatively large head for its body, and has a short, stout black bill with a yellow base and thin whiskers on the sides. A slight crest is sometimes visible on the top of the head. The eastern phoebe gets its name from its song that can also be confused with that of the eastern wood peewee. Have a listen. This species inhabits shoreline shrubs, roadsides, woodland edges, parks, and suburban yards. They will readily build nests on human structures including sheds and bridges. Eastern Phoebes usually start to arrive in our region in late March, even this year, and will typically raise two broods of young before leaving the region for the winter 